Hello, Peter Alice here. You know, one of the questions I most ask these days is, what is your favourite golf course? And I say, well, there are many, but really the backbone of them all is heather and pine, gorse and silver birch. That's what I was brought up on. And there are little nests of those sort of courses dotted through Great Britain and Ireland. I'm here at Hindhead, just one of those such courses. The inspiration of the great Sir Arthur Conan Doyle way back in 1904, when a group of people got together and decided that a golf course would be a pretty good idea. The golf course was designed by a committee, some of whom had already laid out a golf course at Hankley Common, three or four miles away, and one had designed a set of holes for Edward VII at Sandringham, but of course with some professional advice, this time from J.H. Taylor. The course was opened by two of the greatest professionals of the day, J.H. Taylor and James Braid. They must have created quite a stir at that time. A golf course at Hindhead. Mm, little Switzerland, they call the area. Hindhead, 650 feet above sea level, is an absolute delight. And years ago, many people came because the air was fresh and it was cheaper than finding your way all the way to Switzerland. In 1913, Hindhead was the only 18-hole golf course in the area. Hankley Common had nine holes, Blackmore 12, and Liphook, that lovely course just off the A3, did not even exist. It's not overly long from the back tees, just 6,356 yards, but it's a series of very good par fours, some neat par threes, and a couple of par fives. The first nine contrasts very much from the second nine three or four deep ravines, gullies, valleys, call them what you will, exist in the first nine holes, whereas once you climb up, not too severe a climb from the ninth to the tenth, it's relatively flat countryside with some very, very pleasant holes. Harry Varden and Ted Ray played an exhibition match here in 1913, and some years later, 1932 in fact, the great James Braid and Sandy Hurd also played an exhibition match. The great Di Reese was the professional here from 1938 right through the war years up to 1947. David Lloyd George was also a member, in fact from 1922 to 1945, and he lived in the nearby village of Chert. George Bernard Shaw also was a neighbour just up the road and occasionally wandered in, knock a ball about. The course record is 64, held by Alex King, the club professional, in 1956. The course itself, although not a monster, has been used many times for pre-qualifying for the Open Championship, something the club and its members are very proud of. From the back tees with a little bit of wind blowing, it's a very good test indeed. And it's a pretty stout finish from the 15th home and several quirky holes in between. The short holes at Hindhead are particularly good, especially the third, just under 200 yards in length, a very formidable par three indeed. And the eighth at 233 yards, walking off there with a three, hoo -hoo, that's a feather in your cap. It's a friendly club with good in-house facilities and a smiling face is greeting you along the way. An excellent pro shop run by the indomitable Benson, who will look after your every need and whim. The club are also lucky to have a fine group of greenkeepers who look after the club in fine style. You never come here and say, mm, the course is not looking very good. Even in the winter months, it's a joy to play. And now the final, the 18th. A very good par four indeed, just over 440 yards. The green right in front of the clubhouse, the terrace full of people all watching as you come up to the final green, hoping they're going to see something good. And many times they do. So you finish your round, into the clubhouse, enjoy the facilities there, and when the sun's shining, come out onto the terrace and admire the view. It's a stunner. So why not come and join us at Hindhead? I guarantee you a warm welcome and an enjoyable day out, although I can't really, in all honesty, guarantee the weather.